Might have to use this mic then. I can't. Anybody need a prayer list? If you do, let me know, or Tom can get it, or someone. No one needs it, it looks like. Everybody's got one. Okay, while you're getting settled, I'm going to go over a few announcements. don't have a whole lot of announcements, but I hope. Is this on? All right. All right, um, don't forget, this coming Sunday, January 24th, we're going to have our budget meeting uh, for 2021. This is for members after the morning service, so please, if you want to be a part of that, um, this will not be online, so if you're online tonight, you will not be a part of that. Uh, and not only are we going to go over the budget, we're going to talk about possible carpeting downstairs, so uh, we'll go over some numbers for that and uh, get your approval on that and what you would like to see done. So that'll be this Sunday. Uh, we'll go over all these, but Addicts at the Cross is starting, Larry Scran is starting a thrift store. Uh, Diana was showing me some pictures tonight that he's got a nice place and that he's leasing out and uh, gonna fund a halfway house for women, named it after his daughter Victoria's place. Uh, she already took a couple, have you taken a couple loads, haven't you? And others have too, but uh, they're starting to separate that and get everything kind of organized, hung up, get the different sizes and things. Uh, but one thing, we ask you not to bring it to the church, to bring it to the Pomeroy's home. But the same thought, don't just bring it when you get it done. We ask you to hold it because their garage is getting pretty full and getting, they can't get around in their garage and stuff and people bring things. So hold it off until she is ready to go. She'll give you at least a couple days notice. And then you can drop it off, okay? Because they don't know when they'll be going up again. But so they're asking you to hold it on, just get the stuff settled and put away and what you're going to bring. And then she'll let you know when they're going to take a load up. All right? So keep that in mind. Uh, church cleaning for this Sunday will be Jessica Mullet. And um, she'll be doing the sanctuary. Upstairs we need, we need to have someone for that. And bathrooms, uh, Amanda Jackson will be doing that. So uh, keep that in mind. If you can help us out with the upstairs, see Jackie or Travis. All right. We always, Travis or J Jackie always usually, the one of them to uh, fill in for anybody that doesn't come. So, so if you can help, we'd appreciate it. All right. Jackie here. Did I miss anything for announcements? All right. So we don't have a whole lot. So uh, let's see here. We're also trying to plan, we're putting a bulletin, we're trying to plan to have a, um, oh, what am I, I can't think of it now. Yeah, communion, duh. It's been a while. We, we've ordered these things where they actually come in, they're already wrapped. The juice and the bread is wrapped individually, so we're trying to figure out how to do that. We've ordered them, and I'll have to give a couple weeks notice for the people at home if they want to take partake of that, they can have stuff ready at home. But I'd like to do that. I hate to go without communion. And it seems like it's been such a long time. And so we're, going to, we're trying to plan out. I'll let you know more about that too. So, all right. It'd be a little different, but it'll still, it's what it means. And I just want to make sure we re remember that. Also, if you go over your prayer list, uh, who gave on the second, on the first column, excuse me, the name Tracy? Needs a liver transplant. Okay, Rebecca, you did? I just want to make sure. I wrote down a lot of these, but didn't write them all down. How's she doing? Not well. Not well. So she needs it pretty quick. Okay. Okay, that's Tracy, if you're at home. Oh, uh, let's see here. Tom Caroselli. Uh, He's very discouraged. Uh, he got electrocuted second and three, second and third degree burns. He is home. Laura said he's, he's doing better, but now they're thinking he's going through occupational therapy. And now, because, I think this is why he's getting discouraged, they're talking about bringing him back in and doing more skin grafts. So that's not over with yet for Tom. All right. 
Kimmy Corbett is home. They've taken her out of the hospital. And so it was good that she gets to go home, but they're still, you know, her food is not moving through her bowels real good. I guess that's part of it. Uh, she is handicapped, I believe. So just keep her in your prayers that things will work out there, okay? Uh, let's see what else we... Who gave Paige Hendricks? Anybody give Paige Hendricks? Okay, Natalie. As far as you know, just going still through the treatments? Okay. All right. Jimmy Saffle. I know, Tom, I got that for you guys, Tom and Shar. Is that for you guys, Jimmy Saffle? You have it? Okay. At least I have the right one who gave it. I had something. Okay. Okay, Todd Limpert family. I guess a few people in our church know him. He did pass away from COVID. Um, Mike Todd was telling me he came uh, yesterday, and uh, he's telling me he had a friend who passed away last week, and the friend refused, so we better learn from this. He said he just did not believe in this. Everything was hyped up and about what was going on, so he would not go to the hospital because he thought it was, and I think it was, she said 11 days, wasn't it, Jackie? 11 days he refused to go, and his wife said, you're going. By that time, he hardly could breathe, and he ended up passing away. So uh, just when somebody says they have, we better take it serious, amen, or feeling down. Uh, let's see here. Who gave Linda Campbell? Was that anybody? Okay, I don't have a name for that. Paul, how's Nancy Yannick doing? Have you heard anything about her? Okay. All right. Let's see. Anything about Michelle Russell, Trudy? Okay. Min Misty about Mary Ann? Have you heard anything? She's done with her treatment? Okay, done. Doing good. Okay. Okay. Family of FPC is Trudy Zimmerman family this week. And we're starting all over. Can't get less more than Z, huh? Then we start all over. Uh, so keep keep her in your prayers. Uh, let's see here. Bob Hill, just keep praying for Bob. Uh, I tried to contact him today, and then I sent a text out, too, to them, and I had, they have not got back with me. Um, so I'm hoping that I uh, hear from him soon. Anybody hear, have heard anything? All right. I've heard some things secondhand, but I want to hear it you know, from him first before I say. All right. Emily, back in school, so she's doing okay? All right, and Natalie, how's your shoulder doing? Same? Because you said the surgery didn't help a whole lot. Ouch. Okay. So March 5th, Natalie goes in for shoulder to see what next step is. All right. Cast, I talked to Dennis today, Kathy Kinzelman. Uh, the gel has not helped her knees. So I don't know what to <clears throat> I don't know what they're going to do. Um, Denny asked for prayer. Denny Kinzelman. He got. He said last night he got a very sharp pain in his eye, and it was really a lot of pain. So they went uh, to the doctor. Burns here. I can't remember what he said, but they have found out that his right eye right now. Usually it's in both eyes, but his right eye now has arthritis. Have you ever heard of that? I didn't hear that, but he has arthritis in it, so it's something they're going to have to take a closer look at in a week. Right now, they're trying eye drops, 
And he says, it is a lot, it's a lot of pain. It's, right now he can hardly see out of it because his eyes always watering because of the pain. And so he's got some other things going on, but that's the main thing right now that he's concerned about and wanted prayer. So for his right eye, they say usually it happens in both eyes, but right now it's only his right eye and it's arthritis. All right, let's see here. Candy Darasuba and the baby. Uh, the surgery went well. The baby's breathing on her own. You guys can add to this. The candy's going home tomorrow, I believe. And then the baby's going to stay, so as of now. So I don't think she knows how Jackie was texting or didn't know how long yet. But uh, just thank you for your prayers there. The baby weighed four pounds something, didn't it? Six ounces, was it? Or? Eight ounces, four pounds, eight ounces, the baby, so. All right, let's see. Hey, who gave Sharon Gillis the name Sharon Gillis, diagnosed with lymphoma and put in port for a treatment? She's been on for a while, and I, don't, I didn't put a name for that one. Okay. Curran, talk to Denny about that. Her back procedure, February 3rd, will be the first procedure on, I think it's, a, I, have, I left my notes at home, but I think it's the right side of her back. And then the next, in three weeks, I think it's the 23rd. I'll, I'll get that right by Sunday or next Wednesday, but I know the third's right, that she'll have Feb, uh, her first surgery. And then the, the other part of the back in three weeks after that. Okay. Paul Tomer, I haven't, I talked to him Saturday. Uh, last I heard, though, he was going to a home, I mean, to, not a home, but uh, moving to a different rehab center. He didn't like the one he was in, and so he's going to go to Avon. Last I heard, I have not confirmed that yet, but that's what I've heard. And uh, so he's, he's still in rehab, basically doing what he was doing before. Uh, let's see here. Ray Garn, how's your dad doing? Have you heard anything? We got here. Uh, you think it's blocked or dilated bile duct. He was in a lot of pain, had to go to the emergency room. Okay, so the root of stone put stent in. And going home tomorrow. Is he feeling okay or? That's great. <laughs> I never heard of that either. We got some things going on here. Yeah. Two, yeah. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. That's all we need is more stuff, right? Okay. All right. That's what I went over. Anybody want to add? Take away? Tom. What is it? Stroke. I see you. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to bring it up. <laughs> North Was North Dakota one it or South Dakota? Yeah, so they've been all day, they've been texting back and forth, Jackie, and waiting, think they're going to go on the plane, and something happens. And Just before we came, I think they said they were getting on the plane. Yeah, so. What's that? So they've had a fun day. <laughs> We're not laughing at them. We're just, I understand. But it's got to be frustrating. He didn't want to go the cold anyhow. Like that's the last place he wanted to go, and then that. 
<laughs> yes, it is. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Katie. So had surgery for COVID. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so had COVID and needed surgery for different. For different sickness then, really, I guess. Okay, that's David Henson. Hansen. Had COVID, but still needed surgery for a different sickness. So pray for him. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Bev. The what? Harrison family. It's part of my hearing and part. The mask. Yeah. Wow. My goodness. So she lost son from COVID and other other family members have had it too? Hmm. Wow. All right. That's the Harrison family. Already lost lost one son from COVID. Um, others in the family also had it and made it through, except. Uh, the one son, but one other son had cancer, but he did make it through the COVID, so she's been through a lot, Harrison family. All right, anyone else? All right, let's go Lord in prayer then. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we are very humble, Lord. I, we always know that our need for you, but it's uh, these times, and we hear things happening to all around us, Lord. We, we realize, Lord, how fragile and how quickly things can, what we consider come, going apart, coming apart, Lord, at the, uh, at the seams, Lord, it seems like. But, Lord, we know that you're ultimately in control. I pray for Christians that are in, um, I guess, a valley right now, Lord, that they would just grab a hold of you. And, Lord, I ask you increase their faith. I know the disciples asked for that, Lord, increase our faith so we know it can be. And so, Father, we ask for that. We ask, Lord, that they would feel your presence and your peace that only you can give. Help us, Lord, as people that are directly involved, Lord, to be in some type of encouragement, Lord, some type of light, Lord, to help these folks that are struggling. Maybe something we can say, how we pray. I don't know, Lord, but lay it on our heart what we can do personally to help them. And So, Father, as we're not going through all these names tonight, I pray as a church body that we will. Lord, I pray that um, take the time, Lord, and and the concern, Lord, that we need to have for each name that's listed here. Some will know, some we won't. But Lord, ultimately, Lord, we pray it's for your glory. It's for a, drawing a, a closer relationship with you. And most of all, Lord, if it's a time of people reflecting on their salvation, on their eternal uh, destiny, Lord, I pray that uh, they might come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. So, Lord, as we leave this list in your hands tonight, Lord, we ask that, again, that you might be glorified in it. And you might have your will done, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I'm going to start a, I want to say, I don't want to say a six weeks. That sounds like a long, we're, we're only here for about 20, 25 minutes. But uh, a lesson on, I have taught this before about eight or nine years ago, and I've, I've saved it back because I thought this is something that 
I really enjoyed, and it's, I think it just, the Lord led me to this time to do it. And some things I've heard this week and in my own life, Jackie said something she said to me that made me even think about this. So maybe you're just, I'm preaching to myself tonight and you're just here. But have you ever thought about your reactions? Not your actions, but your reactions. And we want to talk about that because, uh, like I said, I always had, I wish some of you guys could come up and tell on yourselves. Anybody want to come up? Uh, you guys hear me enough that I'm not perfect by far, but she goes, she says, since this year, whatever, you've been angry more. And didn't you say that, dear? I'm not hiding anything. She goes, it seems like you get angry easier than you used to. And I said, maybe it's the COVID. I don't know. You know, the stress sometimes of, are you doing the church right? Are you, you just don't go out and visit. You don't, you're not going to nursing homes no more. You're not going to hospitals no more. We try to go to people's homes and you know, taking prayer letters, and I got to stop at Craples for about 15 minutes. She visited with um, uh, Mrs. Mearns that came for about 45 minutes. We, do, we have hits and misses, but maybe that's part of it. I, I don't know, but I've realized my reactions, and we're going to talk about that, and, I, and your, your reactions when something doesn't go right. All right? So I want to start off with this introduction. Your reactions are showing, they show a lot about you. We are taught to act right. You ever heard that one? You ever, your mom ever say that to you or I said it to my children? Would you act right? But the key is act. Would you act right? And how about this one? Don't you do that. You know it's wrong. And how many times have I been told and you've been told, especially as children, you know that's wrong and they still go back and do it. The Bible is clear. Turn to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. As we start this six weeks, I think this is, like I said, a kind of introduction tonight, but I think you'll see a lot about ourselves. And I just pray that as I'm trying to be honest with myself, that you'll be honest with yourself, that maybe it's something we need to work on. It tells a lot about our heart. Hebrews 4.12 says this. I'm sure you know this. For the word of God is quick and powerful. We know that, right? Amen? You ever get convicted by it when you're reading it? In fact, some people shut it and they don't want to hear it no more because it does convict so strongly. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Not only does it know your heart, but it knows your intents. So it, it almost like if we read the scriptures, it almost like it tells our future. If we're really, we're, we're struggling with something, like we're gonna, you're going to end up going here if you keep doing it. Your marriage is going to go here if you don't stop. Your friendships, your job, whatever you want to be. The Bible, it, you get convicted, you're reading, it's trying to tell you, listen, learn about your heart. Because if you don't, you could go down this road. And reactions are a very important part of it. We all know that wrong actions can lead to ruin and often do over time. Sometimes it takes a long time to realize our actions and our choices. Oh, man, how many times have I talked to someone or seen it myself? Man, I wish I'd have never started that. I've heard it about drinking. I wish I'd have never taken that first drink. I'm talking to al alcoholics or I'm talking to people that's in jail um, Man, I wish I wouldn't have started there. It was an action. It was small, but they didn't know it, okay? And by, by the time they started realizing it, they were in big trouble. But reactions are different. You can know immediately that your heart's not right. So there's a difference between actions because it's an act. It can be an act. And we'll talk more about that. So even more powerful than our actions are wrong actions, even though there are wrong actions can lead to a defeated life, wrong reactions can even be more powerful, a faster trip, so to speak, if we're not careful. So I want to talk about that. Actions. Actions can be correct on the surface. All right? It's easy. We don't want to say you're playing a game or I'm playing a game, but, you know, uh, well, I'll put, name some here. I don't lie. And I try not to lie. We could all put that, I'm sure. I don't lie on the surface, okay? How about this one? 
Uh, I don't cheat. I don't swear. I don't do some of the big ones. I don't get drunk. Or I don't commit adultery. And you can go on and list some of those, and we start, we almost start categorizing them, like what's worse, what's not, and so if this isn't as bad, I'm not as bad as you, you're doing that, or I can find somebody that's, or so our actions, we can kind of plan them. We can say all these things, yet all these actions can be utterly defeated by wrong reactions. I don't do this, I don't lie, but a quick reaction can change all that. Even people, they know you on the surface, you're a pretty good person, and all of a sudden you go along and something happens, and they say, what? I can't, that's you? I never thought you would act like that. Because actions can be planned. Reactions aren't. Actions can be planned and even practiced. Pretty good at it. I always said, when you come to church, you know, we, we have a way we do things here. We got a plan and we kind of go with it. And uh, some people just sit and they go out and maybe they're the same or worse when they came in because they just go through the actions of what they're supposed to be doing. So actions can be planned and even practiced for our benefit. I want to look good. I want to feel good. I want to fit in. And we can, we can do that, become actors, so to speak, but are not what is truly in the heart. All right? It's not what's truly in the heart. Act right. It doesn't mean your heart's right. So example. And I'll ask you for examples. When you can think of your heart or somebody else's heart you've seen that really shocked you, all right? How about this one? A child is in a playpen with his toys, and they're having a good time, and everything is going good, and they're alone, and they're having, it's just great. Put another child in with them. And that child grabs their toys, amen? What usually happens? They usually get furious, amen, and they fight, that's mine. It really tells what's in the child's heart. Amen? It seemed okay when everything was going good, but you put another child in, all of a sudden, who they really are comes out. How about this one? How about, uh, I'm telling on myself, but probably some of you, how about everything is going good in the car and you're driving along, but all of a sudden somebody cuts you off and cusses at you, or how are you going to react? I want to ram them. That's what you like to do sometimes, amen? Yeah. It tells who we really are. How quickly? Or can we be calm about it? Can you think of any other examples or reactions that the heart might be exposed? We might not say, well, I'm really not that person. We're going to talk about that later. What do you think? Anybody have any thoughts on that? Anybody see anybody like, I can't believe that? You know, road rage can happen, amen? You've heard about it. It's amazing how it can happen. How about this one? I've given this because I've given this to people that are, uh, I've, I've counseled people, and I've asked them this question when they were having trouble. It, usually when it's anger, I'll ask them this along, somewhere along in our counseling, whenever God le leads, leads me to do it. I'll say, what happens when you're, you're yelling? And they'll, they'll both admit, yeah, we yell, and we get mad at each other and all that, and, you know, our actions are what they should be. And I said, what happens when the phone rings? And they'll say, well, we get quiet and we answer it. I mean, you, you don't pick up the phone and start yelling then? Or what are you calling me for? We're in the middle of an argument. No. And I says, that shows you can control your actions. You just choose not to. And that's the way we do a lot of things. I just can't. I just get so. No, you can control it. Because if the right situation comes, a knock at the door, and you're yelling, or something's out of control, all of a sudden, put this stuff away. Come on. Shh. Kids, and you answer the door, and it doesn't, you're not the same person then, you're acting, amen? And God, of course, sees all that, and he knows all that. So we're talking about tonight, I'm going to talk, that's actions, all right? How about this? And I've seen this, and you've probably seen it. When your children are bad in public, you're, you're embarrassing me. I know one, I think it was a grandma one time. I don't know, it might have been a Lowe's or something. We've seen it. She took the kid down and smacked him. 
And she, she even, I, I remember, I was thinking, good, amen? But other people think, oh, what will people think? What are they going to think of me if I do that? Are they going to turn me in? Our actions, we, we think ahead with our actions. What will this cost me? But we don't on our reactions. So two basic truths concerning as we get started in this uh, six weeks lesson. Two basic truths concerning reactions. We know that in a non-Christian world, and we live in that, amen, and it's getting worse. Know that in a non-Christian world, we are going to be treated in unchristian ways, which makes it easier for unchristian-like reactions. Turn to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Talking about the world hating us. Verse 13, chapter 3 of 1 John. Marvel not, my brother, and he's talking to believers, if the world hates you. All right? Turn to John chapter 15. Back to John chapter 15. John chapter 15 and verse 18. Jesus talking to the disciples. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So we're talking about reaction. Sometimes the world, so to speak, and I said this with couples and I've said it with brothers and sisters. And, you know, we know each other. We know how to push the buttons. The world knows how to push the buttons, too, of Christians or religious people, if you want to go that way. They know, they know what bothers us. They know what should bother us. Maybe sometimes they're surprised by it because we're not, but we should be. Does it bother you when someone says, it takes the name of Jesus Christ in vain? I remember at work sometimes, they knew you were a Christian. Sometimes they would just do something just to, to see how you act. They would say something terrible. I told you about one guy one time, he, we were supposed to watch a, a video. And what he did was, when the foreman wasn't looking, he put an X-rated video in. And so when it started, he, he wanted to get the Christians' reactions. Because we had a lot of Christians on third shift back then. It wasn't a big shift. We had a lot of Christians. And he just had to get, of course, they shut it off right away. And he's having a good, and some of his buddies are having a good time laughing. They want to push your buttons. They want to see how you react. Do you really believe it? Let's see how you act, react then. So it makes it easier. We're hated. Jesus was criticized, resented, and openly hated. And we all know that it was undeserved. And so when you think about that, we probably deserve some of the treatment that we get. We've said something. We've hurt someone. We've, we're not perfect as Christ was. We have a sin nature. And we probably deserve some of it that has come our way. I told of... Uh, Someone in our family doesn't like me, but honestly, I didn't, I didn't say the words that he thought I said. But you know what? I've always told Jackie, she goes, but you didn't say it. I said, no, but I felt it in my heart. And so even though I wasn't the one that said it, to him personally, it doesn't matter. I thought it. I'm just as guilty, amen, in my heart. So he had a right to be mad. He had, I shouldn't have made that judgment call. Don't be shocked or unprepared. Plan ahead. We're talking about tonight. Please pray about your reactions. Please pray about that. Pray ahead so reactions are right towards the world, towards even religious people, and toward other Christians especially. It doesn't mean we agree with these people because we don't all of a sudden get in their face and let's talk them down and let's show them what I'm going to stand for truth. It's the way we approach it. It doesn't mean we agree with them or that we're giving in. You guys are weak. No. We've got to be a testimony. Jesus didn't go up and grab the Pharisees, amen, and choke them and pin them to the ground. He could have, amen. He didn't. He talked with them. He let them know. He wasn't happy with them. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. So remember this tonight. Reactions need to be right towards the world, but it needs to be done through prayer. 
Also know this. Know that one's reactions reveal our true selves. You believe that? And we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks. Know that one's reactions reveal our true selves because reactions are spontaneous. No planning, all unprepared and unplanned. And all Satan has to do is bring something in our path or God allows something to happen. And that tells us who we are. God's not trying to trip us up or trick us. He's trying to teach us. You need to work on this area. You think you got it right, but you don't. If I just bring somebody in your life or something said, it'll tell you who you really are by how you react. So know that one's reactions reveal our true selves because reactions are that way. They're just very quick. We cannot re react in any way that is contrary to what we really are. God will reveal our natural tendencies. Turn to jo Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. As you read this, you'll, you'll know this verse. God's going to reveal our natural tendencies. Je Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. Now really look at this close. I know we've, we've said it before, and it's in many messages in one way or another. The heart... I'm going to say my heart. <laughs> Let's make it personal. The heart is deceitful above what? All things. Now wait. There are some pretty deceitful things and people out there. In fact, we blame Satan for a lot of it, amen? He's deceitful. He's been since the garden. But what it's saying is even more than that, our own heart. Our own heart. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? You think you think you're, you think you know your heart? You think how much you can control? Oh, if God didn't have a hold of you, or there wasn't laws of man and uh, to follow. I wonder what we'd be today in this world. How low could you go? Desperately wicked. That's why we need Christ. Amen. We need Him each and every day. I, the Lord, search the heart. Verse ten. I try the reins, in other words, the kidneys or the seed of feelings or passions. He knows your passions and he will test your passions. The kidneys, sometimes you look at that, it's talking about the reins, talking about the inner part of you. All right? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So I'm judging you. I'm, I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to show you. That what you think you might be, you got a lot to work on. Job was a good, upright man, but God said, you have some things to learn. You need some things. You're going to be taught through this process. And sometimes we think that we're better than someone else. Or we're... God's saying, your heart is desperately wicked. He says, I try the reins even to give every man, and our reactions show that. How little does it take from the world or for someone else to push your buttons and my buttons? Or do we just say, I'm a very passionate person, I just can't control it? Have you ever said in a response to an unchristian like behavior, you ever said this or thought this? You've done something wrong, you know, and maybe you've done it in front of someone else, and you said this. It's not like me to act like that. I can't believe I did that. Oh. How about this one? Don't judge me for one mistake. I'd probably say, don't judge me for one mistake today, amen? <laughs> don't judge me for one mistake. It's not truly who I am. And we start making excuses for who we really are. And we start camouflaging our sins, so to speak. We would not say that, but our reactions show, no, 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 no. You're not right. And God says, I'm trying to show you some things, some areas you need to work on. And it's not about the other person. It's about us. Amen? We like to blame it on, the, I like to blame it on Jackie, and she likes to blame it on me, or whatever it might be. The kids, you ask the child, who did it? He did it, or he made me do it. Reactions. It's not me. It's not truly who I am. Yet, if truth be told, 
That is who we are. But that doesn't mean that's who we have to be, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next few weeks. Yeah, we can all point out the reactions, the quickness, how we react, and it's wrong, and how angry I can get, and how quickly I can get, and how upset I can get, and how mad I can get, and how frustrated I get. And You ever get up in the morning, it's almost your whole day's ruined? They call it getting up on the wrong side of the bed, and your whole day's ruined. Somebody can say something to you in the morning, and all of a sudden you're so frustrated, that tells you who you really are. You're a very frustrated person that doesn't trust the Lord. To help you with it, to get you through, you've, 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 we've, we've, we're very selfish people anyhow, but sometimes God's got to say, but do you know how selfish you are? Well, I know how selfish he is. I know how selfish he is, yeah. No, look at yourself. Look at yourself. When we react in unchristian-like behavior, whether circumstances or towards people, we confirm the truth of what our Lord said and turn in Mark and Mark. This is very important tonight. And Mark chapter 7. The Lord's words. Mark chapter 7. Verses 20 through 23. Mark chapter 7, the Lord said this. Talking about behavior. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. I can, you and I can cover up a lot of them. Thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. We know Christ has given us victory over that, amen? But one of the steps of spiritual growth is working with the Holy Spirit to help control our reactions. Because there's times when I, I know I'm going into a bad... Like when I would come to work, I, I would drive when I used to work. I had about a half hour drive to Mansfield when I used to, to work there before I got into ministry, I'd have a half an hour to prepare. And I'd pray, and, and before I picked up a, another worker on the way, and I'd pray, Lord, help me be prepared. I, I knew what I was going into. I knew some of the guys. I knew, you know, we had a lot of Christians, but we also had those guys who were just, Lord, I, I planned that. But I could not plan on if something happened that I wasn't totally out of the ordinary. The foreman comes and starts yelling at me. How am I going to react? It didn't always react good. Or somebody comes and says something that I never thought would even ever be told or said to me about something. I'll tell you one time it happened, and I had to, uh, or you believe it or not, or um, if I ever told you this, our, we were part of the Steelworkers Union. Well, the president of the Steelworkers Union was gay. I had a problem with that. But one day, and I'm sharing this with you, he tried to make a pass. And he's always, he always done that to other people around the area. And, of course, he's been the union president, you know. And people would always, you know, like laugh it off. And I told him, I don't ever, if you ever do that again, I don't ever, ever do that again. He never did. Amen? But there, I could have gotten mad. I could have grabbed something. You know what I mean? I don't, you don't know, you know how you're going to react to something like that. I said, I don't believe in that. I think it's terrible. I think it's sin. And so sometimes you're going to come across something that you weren't ready for. Are you going to have a biblical answer? Are you going to have a carnal answer? And that shows a lot about you. And many, and I could say guilty, many times carnal answers. So when we talk about this, your reactions are showing who you are. We're going to learn in the coming weeks how to help with that and how to get it under the Holy Spirit's power and to, to, to dig a little bit deeper into our reactions. But we have to know, we have to believe that I, we have to really have a desire. I really want to grow. I'm tired of, I can be a Christian on Sundays and I can read my Bible and I can do devotions. But really, when all of a sudden something doesn't go right or it happens quick, I do not handle it right. I do not handle it like a Christian. 
And just ask yourself, Lord, is that who I really am? And I say by Scripture, yes, what comes out of you at them moments is really you. But it doesn't mean you have to live a defeated life or you're this loser. It just means God's trying to teach you. Please work on these areas. Don't ignore them. Don't push them away. God's trying to get you to say, I, want, I got something much better for you. So help us understand it as we go on in the coming weeks. The steps of spiritual growth. Our heart is deceitful. We can't do it on our own. If you try, you're failing and you know it through your reactions. Yeah, but I pray and I do all this. Yeah, but you're not really doing it under the power of the Holy Spirit. Because God will give you the victory. It might take some time, but you'll know you're going in the right direction. So talk about, just think about that this week. Your reactions. How do you react to tough situations? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, thank you for this Bible study. Lord, help us to learn about ourselves, Lord, to be honest with ourselves, that we, we're, none of us are perfect here, we know that, but maybe there's some here, Lord, that have, didn't even have any idea that some of the reactions was really telling them who they really are. It's so easy to come to church and to cover up, Lord, and, and what's really going on in our lives, but you know, and we know, areas we need to work on. Help us to quit hiding them and bring them out in the open, like David said, Lord, help me to know my secret sins. And that's often revealed through our reactions. So, Father, help us in the coming weeks, Lord, to, to learn more about them. But, Lord, also have a desire to, even if we have to step on our own toes, so to speak, to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.